Laura here, nice of you to join me. Okay, this is part two of the scalloped square memory book, memory book, should I say. And um, in part one, we made the the memory book as such, the out, outer covers and the spine. We also did the hinge. If you um, have got to this video by mistake and you want to uh, watch that first video, I will put the link up, I'm getting good at this, in that corner there. And that then will take you to the playlist for this particular series of videos. So, uh, as we said in the, the first video, I'm going to be using um, these dice by Creative Expressions designed by Lisa Horton. I wasn't sure which one I was going to make. Um, I was going to use. It's so, it's so difficult because they're all so nice. And as I said before, you can uh, mix and match these. So if you want these big circles, but you didn't want the flowers, you could um, put in the mesh here in there instead. So you can create more of a grunge look. Uh, if you wanted to, to maybe take the circles out and put the leaves in, then with the flowers you could do. And if you wanted to take out this grid work, you could have put in the swirls instead. So it's very versatile. So don't just look at your dies and think, oh, I've, I've, what am I going to do with them? I've only got, you know one possibility you've got numerous 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 of possibilities of how to use these dies they um come at they're set they're in a um the dies the seven in the pack if we turn them over so you get one outside cutting edge which is the square and then you get then these are your broken tiles okay so you get your outside full cutting edge and then you get three of the broken tiles but they're the full uh, cutting they cut fully into your paper okay so they give you a a full cut if you like and then these are the the the, the designs that cut into the paper so these haven't actually got a cutting um, they haven't got an outside cutting edge so if you didn't if you wanted to just have the tiles plain you didn't without the designs you could do that as well if you wanted to have the designs cut into your square you can do that as well you don't need um, the other cutting bit if you then want to layer them then you could um, do that as well to try these out for ages so I'm so pleased that um, I've actually got them um, I actually saw these first of all back in January at um, the the show in Frankfurt and I messaged Lisa straight away and I said I've got to get these dies when are they available with these dies as well this is my, another favorite of mine which is the scalloped squares uh, these are amazing they are big, fast becoming one of my favorite dies ever they are just so pretty and sweet and as I say you've got um, there's nine dies in this pack um, as well so you've got the scalloped edge with the stitching round and then you've got the um, then you've got the plain square right we're going to make uh, this is going to be our front cover so what I've done is I've used the scalloped square uh, which comes in the other set, which is this one here. Um, it's the Stitched Collection Scalloped Layered Squares. So it's that one. So that's the biggest um, scalloped edge one in their pack. So I've used that, which is the black. And then we're going to use the Sunny Days die, um, which is the broken tiles, which is there. Let's find it, which is this one here. Turn it up the right way. Uh, which is that one okay so we're going to use that so how what I've done just to uh, go through what I've done with this I had inked the the uh, main base square in a few different colors 
then I'd die cut the tiles out of the uh, the full tile uh, we'll call it that the full tile which is that one and then we put in the decorative in the um, in the middle and cut that out so then you end up with your cut out so but I don't know whether I want to have my tiles a bit more prominent not as flat on the board but actually no I think I'm going to keep it like that because I have to be careful because I need to put somewhere around here I need to put my closure so yeah I think we'll keep them flat and then we can add some flowers or something afterwards if we so wish okay it's just the sort of the background okay so I think I'm going to have it that way so again it doesn't matter which way you have it round anyway so let's get started on that so first of all we're going to cut out our scallop square this one is going to be this piece of paper is going to be big enough oh, my squeaky die machine I must put some oil on that That is the scalloped square cut out in the bin. Then we need to cut out the base die, which is that out of our uh, out of this is the coconut white cardstock. And that big crack is normal. Okay, it is. Now I've already cut out this um, the base one because you you need the white one and you need a base or uh, out of your two different colours. Now this is the it's raspberry. This is called Raspberry, it's foundation cardstock and there we go so you can see what it is and it is a size it's 220 GSM so it's a nice weight it's nice it's a smooth cardstock it's not shiny it's just smooth so you get it's a really nice colour so we're going to put these in and I think it must go that way uh, never work out how they go so let's put in the big one first that would be like a jigsaw puzzle so put the big one in and then we need to put the die the, the decorative one that's going to cut out in the middle now I will need to tape this down because it has to stay in place like so it's just there and then this one is going to go here it goes on the top again just get your spacings right Again, I've just got some old cardstock. Sorry, old um, cellar tape. and push that down and then push it through I'm going to 
going to go through a couple of times just to make sure and they should have cut hopefully they've all cut out nicely no needs to need an extra shim on there I think um, so what I might do is I've just got a spare magnetic shim just put that in should hopefully have done it. Yes, that has. That's brilliant. And it didn't move, so that's even more. Quids in. So, this is what we've got so far. So, that's going to go on there. That actually looks really nice in black and white. Nope, we've got we are going to stick with what we're doing so that then is our sort of uh, this is going to be our decorative feature let's see I think it goes it goes along the bottom and then that one goes there so I'm going to go ahead and we are going to use the colour cloud to decorate um, to blend our coconut white so we'll use the so we've got terracotta and these are chalk cloud vanilla twist and lemon meringue now if you haven't if you've never heard of uh, chalk cloud or color cloud before um, then you're in for a treat um, the Sorry, the vanilla twist is a colour cloud, it's not a chalk cloud, so taking that one out. Um, they they're like a they're a blending ink, but in a in a pot, or in a tub. So when you open the lid, you uh, and they're brand new, you have a silver seal on the top. So you pull that off, and then you uh, you've you've got then a a felt pad inside okay and then in behind the felt pad if I take that up and show you um, you can see there is a like a donut sp sponge in there and that then has got that's all the ink is suspended in that sponge so that when you pr um, press down on the top of the pad you then get the ink sucked up into your blending tool or smoothie and then you can blend with it um, as you can see this one um, with the chalk with the sort of you can see the bottom of it you might be able to see the sponge a bit better there um, I find these blend like a dream um, I've had so much fun messing and playing with these it's unbelievable so I've got the colors I'm going to use are um, this is lemon meringue Pretty prince, uh, Princess Pink and Terracotta and I'm using uh, the smoothies I, I love smoothies uh, I've only just recently been introduced to smoothies and um, yes I'm in total love um, you can wash them out uh, I will just wash mine in hand soap um, I get like the smelly ones like the bubblegum ones and or the unicorn um, I don't know, well, you know what I mean, that type of um, hand soap. And I just put them, rinse them in the tap, and I just squeeze them out like this. And then you see all the, the ink that's suspended in your sponge comes out. So they come become clean. Now, you're never ever going to get them to shop bought smoothies again because the ink will stain the smoothies, as you can see but um, that's okay um, you just um, sort of use you just reuse them again um, what you could do if you wanted is that is so whichever uh, smoothie you've used for what um, so if you, you have a smoothie for your greens your blues your pinks your yellows um, you could do that and then that way you know you know that you're not going to get any cross contamination so to speak but right so I've just put some onto my 
um, smoothie I've just pressed down and as you can see how much ink in that one tiny little press has actually gone on to my um, applicator so just dab it off now this we're not going to waste that we can mist and um, you know help with our blending process but just as you would a normal blending ink I just coming from the side and as you can see that I still have loads on my smoothie loads of colour um, which at first you think ah! but um, don't worry because we can it will blend out so just give yourself a few little um, spots to blend like that I might get one more over here just around the edge and then I'm going to go in with the pink sorry with the yellow and the, this yellow is very it's like a very muted it's not a pastel yellow it is more it's lemon meringue so I suppose it's a lemon meringue colour and you can see then that it's turning to orange as I'm going over the pink and you can still move the colours around and then because it will it it uh, it will look different when it's dried as well so, sort of my colours down I want a bit of the orange or terracotta just to dull down a bit of the pink so keep blending again just do as little and as much as you want I've just come in again with the pink just to get that bit more vibrancy in the pink again a bit more yellow there so don't forget you won't see this so much because it's going to be hidden uh, you just want the pop of colour to come through now I am going to mist my mat and I'm going to pick up the rest of that ink there so I'm just going to dip it in I'm just going to leave it and then take it off and again and then you will find that the colours will start merging and they'll, they'll dull down a little bit so I'm just going to use my heat tool Okay, that's semi dry now as you can see it's sort of all blended together now so you create some fantastic backgrounds with that now you could use your stencils over the top of this if you wanted to to give you your ghosting effect or your bleaching effect so you could use that you could spray more water on there to create more droplets um, you could use your pixie powders or your intense uh, pigment ink as well you could use all that so everything all mix and matches together but I'm going to leave it like that for the moment because um, I just wanted a little bit of a pop of colour now we've got all this ink still left down on our mat now um, you can use rice paper to clean it off keep your rice papers and then you can glue them into your journals brilliantly but I've just got a, um, a, a I've got um, a, an art journal that I've made and I've just created some pages in it so I'm just going to use this just as a mop-up so that I can start creating extra backgrounds um, so you know when I come to then start in my book I'm you know I'm, I'm nearly there for my backgrounds and you can create some really nice background techniques with you know just mop-ups so 
just to make sure you've got all your pieces out and it's nice and clear so then we just need to take it apart this could be tricky Just push this down. This one can go there. Put that in a bit. Oh, I knew I'd get some stuck in there. It's just the fibres from the paper. Okay, and then we're just going to burnish that down and cut that little bit off. So you want to try and get it so that the you haven't got any adhesive showing on the edges otherwise you're going to find that the uh, ink the glitter is going to stick to it so I try and cut as much off as I can So then that's our sort of got our double sided tape and it's all nice and sticky uh, on the edges. Now my glue rubber, if you, um, if you haven't got one of these I suggest you get one. It's one of those little tools that you wish you'd found years ago. I mean I found mine so this is the one I've got so it's a bit manky but it still works and um, but that's probably about 20 odd years ago I bought that one so it just shows you how long they last um, and what I do is once it gets a bit manky at the edges I just cut a bit more off and then it's good to go again so that's why mine is a bit small so Let's me get a bit of paper. So that we can catch our glitter on. And I'm using the frosted sparkle. Turn that way. Um, and it's called the it's Cosmic Shimmer Glitter Bits. And there's three sizes of particles in here. So you've got the ultra fine, which is then your glitter. Then you've got a medium size. Uh, particle then you've got a bigger particle and then that's it's like a round um, particle and that's what you end up with down the sparkles of yumminess so all I'm going to do is just add it to the images just want to take off that little bit there okay and just sprinkle on and then all I'm going to do is work it in. So you just work it into the the holes, into where all the uh, the, the, mag the magnetic, the adhesive sheeting is, and then the glitter will stick to it. 
and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use the back of the uh, carrier sheet that was for the um, the double sided uh, adhesive and just work that in so that it's it's we've got no gaps okay so that's one and then do the next one again just work it in I'm just using what I've got on my mat like so in again so that's that one and then we've got one more which is the these would be also very good if you wanted to create some stencils as well you could create uh, these as stencils now I'm actually going to use um, part of this tile as a pocket when we come to do our book so um, you know you don't just look at your dies and think mm, that's the only thing you can use it for there's loads of ways loads of things that you can do um, you can use your you know the stash that you've got uh, nothing gives me more pressure to look at something and think right you've told me it's going to do this but what else can I do with it um, I like to try and find different ways to make um, our stash go further for one and you know so if you've got a die and you've just bought it for one thing it's not very cost effective is it so you're going to end up with you know a lot of uh, dies that are redundant so I always try and look at different angles to use my uh, use my stash at so I'm just I think we're having a bit of a heat wave here in the UK this week, so it's getting a, um, a tad warm. Right, so we've done that. So now I'm going to stick them down. Now I'm going to work from the edges. So I'm going to just place my dies, my pieces on, so that um, I can work out my spacing because what I don't want to do is end up with a big gap this side and then not have enough a gap um, the other side so we're just going to place them on so that I know roughly where they're going to go like that so so then we take our backing off like that and then it, it looks really it's so cool you could actually put that onto acetate now that would look awesome as well if you put that onto acetate so let's stick this down let's get a good size border all the way around like so I'm not going to stick it fully down because I want to just make sure that it all is all going to fit. Let's stick that one down. Keep it nice and. This one then can go on. There. there in the end so just use the back of the one of the adhesive sheets just use the back of your um, the carrier sheet just to sort of burnish that all down so it's nice and stuck securely I'm just going to go around with my uh, glue eraser just to take off some of the double-sided tape that I may have 
uh, missed as I've cut around it. That looks brilliant. So, uh, so that will now fit onto my scallop square like that, and then that's then going to fit onto the um, the bigger layer of the um, craft card that we cut like that and then we hopefully just here we're going to get we, when we put it all together we'll put the um, the handle on for our closure so let me get my book now we're going to end up with that so I'm going to just open it up I must admit I'm really pleased with how this um, book has turned out okay right so let's glue this on place so this is our front cover so you could if you wanted to ink the edges to give a more of a vintage look I'm going to leave the edges on this one for this book and then we need to stick then our scallop square down And then our decorative piece. Now, um, work out how you, you know, which way up you're going to have it. So I'm actually going to have. Uh, I think I have it that way. No, I'm going to have it that way. So I'm going to have the butterfly flying down. And. Right, the glue rubber is going to come in handy. There we go, just take that off. Would be on that edge, wouldn't it? There we go. Okay. So that's our, our sort of our front cover now coming together. So now we're going to work on. Um, the spine and then offset no actually we leave the spine we'll do the back cover um, because we need to get this this cover bit done before we can then add our closure on here so let's start with um, so we're gonna do the same thing so we're gonna we've cut our um, craft um, sheet, a, a craft card first and I think that measured if I was, I think it was eight and, sorry not eight, one, so it was one and three eighths, yeah, so one, and, uh, sorry not one and three eighths, so it's five and three eighths which is our craft card, then we cut out then we're going to cut out the um, another of the scallop square um, squares, and I've cut one out ready somewhere. It's right in front of me. So, so that'll be the scallop squares, and then we could go with the same uh, design if you wanted to. Um, it's entirely up to you, but we don't maybe don't need to glitter it, um, or you could leave it plain. It's really entirely up to you. Just taking off those 
pesky little tiny bits of um, adhesive sheets that end, end up at, on the corners and it looks like you've got um, just anyway so we could work we could do that again which I did one earlier so that could be then we could add that to make it the same and then do the middle different um, it's entirely up to you I think that's what we'll do so if you wanted to do that you could and um, so it's a bit more uniform so I think I'll leave it like that actually I, um, I think that's what we're going to do uh, for time anyway for time purposes so if you wanted to do if you've got one of the other um, the broken tiles you know use that one as well but that doesn't look too bad I think I'll probably do it so that it sort of um, it's not the same it's kind of different as you can see I've put them in different places but um, I quite like that you won't see so much because that will be obviously on the back so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick the black scallop square to the craft square that we cut out. I'm not going to stick them all down just yet and then I'm going to stick the um, glittered layer on top of that like so. Now when I'm doing my back my um, closures, I so what will happen is our closures is going to be here. So you'll need um, some eyelets. Um, I use the proper dial ones, and you'll need some um, elastic cord. Now I've actually bought some other elastic cord that's coloured. Um, which um, I'm actually going to use so uh, I think we'll use the, the pink um, so I think this is a 3mm right I've just got this cord uh, this elasticated cord I bought you get um, I bought this in this is five meters here I wanted to try it first before I went and got loads of meters uh, I got this from Amazon so what I'll do if, if you like I will put a link in the descriptions down below and that way you can see they they this particularly whoever it is I don't know I just searched and that's what come up um, they've got about 22 different colors so I've got um, Near enough all the colors now on order so um yeah and it's really stretchy so uh, a little is going to go a long way so for then how we're going to create the um the closure on the back so i'm going to turn it around so that you can see now we're not going to cut into our card here into our into our gray board we're going to cut into the um the back panel that we've made uh, that way it just makes um it you can hide all the workings then of your brad sorry of your eyelets on the back here so um it just makes it a bit more neater so what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure uh, i'm going to actually measure from here so from the um the square that we've uh, we blend the use the color cloud on sorry not the the chalk cloud on instead of measuring from the outside edge because i want to make sure that they're all on here so from there i'm probably gonna go in um about probably about an, an inch so i'm gonna go in an inch so you need a pencil so let's mark it about an inch and then again from this side go in an inch like so there then i'm going to measure up probably from the bottom here uh, about another inch okay so go in about an inch so one and again from the bottom of your craft card here 
go in and mark an inch like so now I've got um, I've got a crocodile and a big bite um, because for some unknown reason I don't know what's wrong with my um, with my crocodile it's not uh, setting the eyelets uh, properly uh, I don't know if I've, I've maybe busted the the mechanism in there trying to cut through something I shouldn't have been um, so I'm I'll I'm gonna cut um, I'm gonna do my holes with this and then I'll um, chomp the eyelets out with the big bite so I've got something stuck in there still so oh, you can and uh, move that down so that and we're going to use the bigger um, hole um, for this one. So where are we? So that's I'm going to put that. In there, I think. Mm, yeah. So that's one. Take that bit out, and next one is there. There we go. So that's then them sorted out. So then you need your eye lamp, your eye lets. And I'm gonna go with the silver. Um, sorry about that. And we'll so with this. We need to put then our cord through a hole like so. And this um, is a bit thicker than I'm normally used to. This is a 2.5mm cord. So we put the cord through the hole that we've just made and I've put it quite tight because we, we need to get then the eyelet needs to go in the hole. So you've got your cord um, through the hole that you've punched and then you put the eyelet down because that's what's going to hold it in place so I'll just get my big bite and then I'm going to set the eyelet make sure that your elastic is facing the way that you want it to go you don't want it to go that way so it needs to be facing to um, sort of away from you so it comes off the edge not this way okay that way so then we're going to just put that through there and we're going to set this good old squeeze and there we go this has created a nice and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tap with my hammer I've got one of these bubble hammers I love it look it's a little small hammer and just tap it down to flatten those eyelet um, workings okay then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to probably give it because this is a bit stretchy this is a bit more stretchy I'm not going to give it as much so possibly It. about that much because that gives it a good stretch so probably about there so let me cut that off and then we can measure it so we it's roughly about nine it's 
probably about nine to nine and a half uh, inches in length okay uh, but we're probably going to use about an inch through the hole so probably about an inch through there okay and then that is going to create a, so even if you've got loads in there um, it's going to accommodate okay it's an inch and a half sorry through the hole but you need to gauge your books because you might your book you might need less you might need more so it, it's just a rough estimate that sort of is really so we're just going to push that through and set that like so put that back away and get my hammer out again and just give that a tap and close them up right i'm just going to trim off that excess because we don't need that now and then to just um, cut, cover them over I'm just going to add some of our double sided tape now the double sided tape uh, is just going to, go, going to go along the bottom edge there and that's going to help keep them little tiny pieces in place and also it's going to help with the sticking process these scissors right. okay so then that is then the back okay and then that's going to come across there like so right so we can go ahead now and stick this down quite a bit of glue on that because it'll need to um, it's got a, a lot of pull to it so it needs uh, needs a lot and then we need to stick this down I'd start with the glue bits first so that you can get it into position and then go ahead and stick the double sided tape down Okay, and then burnish really well just to make sure that it's uh, stuck. Okay, so that then is the back bit to our closure, and then we're just going to now put in our um, our little handle. Okay, I was just looking for them. Right now the. These come from AliExpress, my little uh, draw handles, and these um, little screws come from eBay. Now the screws are, I believe, they are seven millimeters, seven mil diameter. Um, I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll also put the link to where you get the screws from in the description down below because when these come from wherever you buy them from they come with their own screws now the screws this one isn't too bad but the screws um have got more of a domed head to them if you can see them there and we'll get one of these but some of them come and the screw heads are um the the, the actual screw don't want to say it the actual um, shaft of the screw head is longer than that and so when you come to put your um, handle on it's too loose it won't actually then screw any further so uh, I source these little tiny screws here that have got the flat head which are perfect 
um, for our handles they're not that expensive I think they could be something in the region of I don't know if it's 199 for 20 I could be wrong but I'm I think it's roughly around that that um, sort of price range but as you can see there's more of a flat head whereas the other one is a bit more of a dome there we go. Uh, and you need the shorter sort of screwy round bit um, you know so that it fits snugly into your uh, handle okay so we're now going to work out what so I want um, it to be sort of in the middle so I'm actually going to measure from the outside edge for this one because I want it to sort of be more or less in the middle so we've got it's five and a half so five and a half so that would be two two and a half so that would be two and three quarters would be the the hole we want to make so two and three quarters so about there and then I'm going to go up as far as I can with my crocodile so uh, but for this one we're going to use the smaller of the um, punches so I'm just all I'm going to do is I'm going to actually it's probably a bit too much we I want it to kind of get so that it's not on it goes through the um the glitter more than the actual um design so for that we're going to go up about another inch so if we go up an inch so i'm just going to go from the let's turn it around that way and we can go an inch from there, which is about there. Okay, and then we remember to use the smaller of the holes, and then you can just chomp through it. And with the crocodile, it's um, fairly easy. Right, so I'm going to just push then our screw through the bottom it may not go so you may need to get your screwdriver out and just um, help it into place uh, this one's probably not the correct one for the job and then just screw it through so that it actually goes through into the top of the book like that and then you can get your handle and just screw that into place she says there we go and now you can um, colour these um, if you've got any spray paints um, I've done that before if you've got any metal uh, metal spray paint you can spray them through I've also tried to um, um, use I've used embossing powders as well so let's now I'm gonna have another tidy up and then we'll get on and do finish the spine and then that then is the the covers uh, and the spine done so then we can then start on our inner covers um, so that would be more of the fun part to do okay now we're ready for the spine I've um, gone ahead and cut them out already so I'll give you the measurements so the we need a craft card and that's going to measure three inches by five and three eighths okay then we need a a gray sorry not a gray a, a black mat layer and that's going to measure five and a quarter by two and seven eighths and then you need a, a, a white card that you're going to um, put some inks on 
and that measures two and three quarters by five and one eighth okay so that's the the sizes for those so I'm going to move these out of the way for just a second so we can start so um, I thought we'd just carry on with the same um, colors that we used on the outside of the card but this time I thought what I'll do is I'll put the color um, no I actually thought what we'll do is we may put some should we do some stamping okay let's use these stamps I'm just going to double check just to make sure that they um, fit and I'm going to use I want to do the circle let's just see yes they fit beautifully so let's turn that over so I'm going to stamp one in the middle first like so and then we can um, move them up and down as we um, we can do then that side and then that side and then we know that we're going to get one in the middle so get it as near as possible and I'm going to use my let's use, excuse the mess of my um, acrylic mat, acrylic blocks. They're well loved. We can now go ahead and blend now I said I was going to put some blending inks on the ground here onto our mat so um, let's go with our chalk cloud again so this is the um, the pink and just dab it on and the yellow the yellow one is a bit more paler so you probably won't get an awful lot so I could actually go ahead put some of the yellow already onto our And can you see as I've put it on how it now highlights the white embossing that it kind of resists it so it's a really nice technique to do and just spritz your mat and you can see the color will uh, sort of it will bead up so let's give it a swipe and swipe this way you'll get very that you'll get a very muted um, colour. Just give that a minute just to cool down because uh, obviously you're heating the paper so you're heating the embossing powder as well. Okay, I'm just going to give this a bit more of some bit more colour. There's a uh, need just a tiny bit of colour I'm just going to add pink 
where the circles would be like so and then a bit more of the yellow just to merge in just to make it stand out just that little bit more okay right I'll just get my bag I'm just going to now ink around the edges so I'm just going to put a tiny bit on just to give the edges a bit of a some definition and you could go ahead and add some paint to this as well make it very um, sort of mixed media-ish um, you could add some stencil, some lines there's all sorts you could add but I'm going to leave it at that so I'm going to now assemble so I'm going to stick it together so I'm going to stick the one that we've just done I'm going to put that down first just unclog so like so and then we can um, stick it onto the um, craft card Excuse me for a minute, if I don't uh, deal with that it would just keep um, binging. Okay, so that is the last spine. We're going to put on the little handle that we can put our book dangle on, that we can make. So I kind of like them like that. So I just buy eye it for the um, where it goes in respect uh, on my um, spine. So so just need some brads and you'll need a squidgy mat, a flower mat, and a pokey tool. Okay, so I'm going to have it about there, so that's fine with me. One. Two. Three. and then go ahead and stick them put the, the brads on Then our book dangled um, our sort of uh, little uh, loop to put the book dangle on, and that goes on there like so. I quite like it because it it um, 
because it's a different, it's completely different here. Although it's using the same colours, I quite like it because it makes it stand out more than the two covers. So that's, uh, I quite like that. Okay, and you can stick that down. Okay, right, we might as well do the, the book dangle. So I've got some little lobster claw um, uh, closures here that we can use to put over over the top and then you can put the, the uh, obviously everything else that goes down. Um, so I've got small ones and big ones, so I'm going to use a medium sized one um, which I might use that small one because it's a small book so we've got a small one here and it just fits over the the ring and you can take it on and off oh. there we go. so one of those you'll need some chain and some jump rings, which put some in here. So I've got a few pieces here that you can use to put on them. Uh, I just kind of buy them as an, you know, as and when I see them, really. Um, so you, you know, you can put um, anything sort of on your. Um, on your book dangle that you can think of really it is uh, they're quite fun to make just get some little keys a little watch charm some keys um, so we've got quite a few and then I've got I've got some little um, beads in here. Um, I also use, which is a good thing if uh, I go to charity shops and buy all their um, sort of costume jewellery and you can make, um, you can take everything apart and um, you can then use the beads and things like that to put on them. Like, like that would be just brilliant for a big book if you had a big book, that one there. So that's all on one thing. Uh, but you can take it apart, you don't have to use it together. Um, so that's a, a, an idea. And again, these ones here, they've got little tiny beads that you can just take off and put on to the side. Um, and this one here is a bit big, so again, you've got loads of elements on these that you can, you know, take off, you know, little flowers and things like that that you can put on the side. So I might actually use those flowers, they're quite pretty actually. So I'll use some of that. And then these are just, um, as I say, you can just maybe cut some of these off and then just use them um you know as their own so you know just go go to charity shops and um you know have a look around uh and it's amazing you can pick up you know for quite inexpensive really um we can go ahead and start taking um or chopping this one off um So there's one. I won't use the rest because that's all sort of purple and I've got more pinks than sort of purple. So I've got that and our little rings. So if we get our rings, I've got some here. These are a bit too small, I think.
um, a put key on there. I'll have one of those decorative ones. Okay, so that then is the our little book dangle. Now I will put some ribbons on the handle as well, just to add a bit more interest. And I might add a bit more sort of up here. But, you know, for a start, that's looking whoop, quite good. Okay, turn it around that way maybe. So you can see, obviously, all the little bits and pieces that we've got there. Right, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, I hope it's not been too boring and um, you've learned something. Um, please, uh, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that uh, subscribe button. And if you do, then um, would you hit the, don't forget to hit the notification bell because that then will alert you to any new videos that I upload in the future so um, you don't miss out uh, if you're waiting for a um, you know a particular video to come in uh, I will say that the clarity videos um, where I've done three parts one two and three as of today which is the 13th of May 2019 um, I have still to upload those videos. They will be coming in the next uh, four to six weeks or so. So um, watch out for those. I haven't forgotten they're on there. Um, it's just that the the book that I was making for the video, I've loaned to somebody else to have a look at, and uh, I'm just waiting to get that back. That's all. Um, so you know, don't. That, that will be coming if you are waiting for it. Um, I'm on social media so uh, I'll put them, all the links in the descriptions down below as well as the links to the little screws and um, the oh yes the screws and the elasticated cord as well I'll put the links down there as well. Um, I think that's about it. Well, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.